Welcome to The Abundance Journey, a show that helps spiritual entrepreneurs create an abundance mindset that accelerates revenue. Secretly, everything you experience in your life is actually abundance. Once you understand how to activate abundance, you find yourself in flow with your business and clients, so it's easy to create the revenue you want. The Abundance Journey is the only show that activates abundance for you, so you enjoy rapid results in your business. Here's your host, The Abundance Ambassador, Elaine Starling. So have you ever run smack dab into a massive problem? Yeah, me too. And it isn't always easy to pick yourself back up and dust yourself off and get back in the groove again. Well, I find it really, really helps when you can get the wit and wisdom of someone who is well known for her resilience in the face of life threatening challenges. And that's why I'm so deeply honored and grateful that we get to chat with Lady J today. Let me tell you a little bit about this woman so you have an idea of why her insights are so incredibly powerful and valuable. Lady J is known as the bounce back queen. I just love that because she's incredibly resilient. She's triumphed over all kinds of life challenges, earning accolades as an award-winning community leader, speaker, and rising multimedia mogul. Lady J has faced abuse, homelessness, addiction, molestation, and health crises, but she's emerged victorious in both life and business through all of that. She's a very dynamic entrepreneur, author, mentor, and the founder of EGO Entertainment Network, life support company, and Bounce Backology, as well as No Limits Ministry. Lady J has a global impact with supporters in 63 different countries, and she's been featured on all sorts of noble media platforms. Dedicated to community service, Lady J runs a successful social support program and mentoring initiatives. With over 15 years of business experience, she's committed to empowering others to bounce back and succeed. Lady J, welcome. I'm so glad you could join us today. Thank you so much for having me. What a phenomenal intro. (laughs) Well, talk about phenomenal. That's you. And, you know, it's so incredibly timely because I think a lot of people are really still reeling after all the COVID stuff and trying to get back into the new normal. And it can be very challenging. So I just really appreciate you taking the time to chat with us today about some of your insights and your experiences and how you were able to turn the the challenges into opportunities. Yes, um, I'm excited to be here to, to share anything that I can to help your audience. <laughs> That's great. Well, as you know, I always like to start every single episode with an intention. An intention is what we want to create and how we want to feel while we're creating it. And it's super important that we take the time to set an intention because we're actually activating the quantum field to create what we want. We are creators and we're so much more powerful than we give ourselves credit for. And it all starts with our intention. Now, I've got a specific way of structuring an intention. I always start with in love and light, because to me, that is acknowledging that the God of your understanding is an active participant in helping fulfill this intention. So it's almost like we're typing into a spiritual GPS. The intention mm-hmm. itself is the address. It's like, hello, divine, we're ready to, to go someplace. That we type in the address, and at the very end, it's only good manners to say thank you. And then I say, it is done as a reminder to me that I'm done typing. I don't have to keep typing. It's like, okay, they got this. They can roll with it. Now, the most important part is once we state the intention, we have to hold it hold that energy, hold that vibration for 78 seconds. And I got that from Abraham Hicks because she was saying, you attract the vibration that you hold. And human beings, the current research shows that we have a shorter attention span than a goldfish. (laughs) I don't know about you, but that's a little concerning. So, you know, I'd like to think I'm a little bit better than a goldfish. But yeah, there's a whole lot going on upstairs and we're very busy. We're very distracted. And so 
holding this intention for 78 seconds establishes Mm -hmm. that we're really serious about this. So the divine can lock in on that frequency and support us in getting there. Now, two things that I've found over the years that I've been doing this that really help when you're trying to hold an intention. The first thing is pick just a couple of words in the intention that are meaningful to you, that feel uplifting to you, and just repeat those over and over again for the whole 78 seconds. The other thing that I've found really useful is notice any shifts in your physical body. You might feel like tingling or ripples of movement or heat or cool. That's all a sign that the energy is already starting to move because that's what we're asking the intention to do. We're asking the divine to help us move the energy so that we accomplish this intention. And noticing that the energy is already moving through your body, that's a really good sign. So get excited, get happy. All right, Mm -hmm. enough build up. Are we ready, Lady J? I'm ready. Awesome. Awesome. I'm so I'm so happy you're willing to play with me. This is really fun. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right, here's our intention. In love and light, we hold the intention that we welcome the learning hidden in every challenge, experiencing it as a divine blessing and miraculous guidance. Thank you, divine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It is done. We give thanks, and so it is. Whoa, you are on fire, girl. (laughs) That was a lot of energy. I really felt that. Thank you so much. What was that like for you? Well, there's something that I do every morning. So I start my morning every morning with prayer, devotion. And then I sit and listen to what God has for me. And so it's, I say it's kind of habit for me. And so I always feel, always feel presence when I do that, especially when I finish what I'm saying, which it is so. <laughs> yes, 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 it is. So the presence kind of consumes me. So yeah. That's wonderful. Thank you. Well, thank you for getting us started in such a beautiful way, because that was really powerful. And I really appreciate the work that you're doing. Like I said, I think so many of us are still kind of reeling from all of the changes that have happened in our world in the last couple of years. And obviously, you're really passionate about the work that you're doing. What is it that got you so galvanized, that made you so committed to this path that you're on? Well, if I could be extremely transparent for just a moment, I would say that when I was younger, you know, being someone that has experienced the worst of life, I've also experienced the best, you know, that that life has to offer. And so with that, in experiencing the worst, it led to several attempts of suicide, suicide attempts. So, and... With the final suicide attempt, you know, I heard God tell me while I was laying on the bed. Well, he asked me a question. While I was laying in the bed on the psych floor at the hospital, 
after trying to attend for the final time. He said, didn't I tell you no, daughter? You tried this numerous times and I keep telling you no. So what are you going to do? And then it came to me and said, do you really want to leave your children in the same predicament that you grew up in or worse? And so from that point on, I had needed something practical in order to start a fire in me to give me the motivation I needed to get up, dust myself off, and figure out how I was going to move forward. Because at this point, even though I knew who he was, I didn't understand what it meant to actually be in relationship with him. Those are two totally different things. And so that moment, it pushed me to go into a season of not just healing, but becoming a whole person. And so that was my driving force. And then with the things that I had to do, all the steps I need, I had to take and the lessons that I learned from those that he placed in my life. That is what gives me the drive to do what I do and push other people to do the same, whether it be in a personal setting or a professional setting. I, I love that what you're saying here. And I'm, I'm going to lead you just a little bit because I always have this one question that I ask everybody. I've never heard the exact same answer the exact same way. I always ask, how do you define abundance given the kind of work that you do? And I heard you say you had to become a whole person. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so I would love to understand what does that mean to be a whole person? And I'm kind of leading you here, but I'm wondering if maybe that has to do with how you define abundance. So first and foremost, abundance to me is overflow. And I'm always going to come from the word of God because without him, I would not be here and I would not be able to do what I do. And so in his word, it says that he is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we could ever ask or think. And let me tell you, he definitely can and will. If you can dream it or think it, it's not big enough. <laughs> so for me, okay, so there's a difference between coping and healing. So, and I say this in my book. So when you cope with something, you're in essence accepting the state that you're in mentally, emotionally, physically, financially, and you're learning how to just live with it. That is not living, that's coexisting. And so becoming a whole person or becoming healed, in order to get to the wholeness, you have to be healed first. And so healing and truly being able to overcome something means that you accept where you are, but you also are willing to do the work, the necessary internal surgery in order to heal properly from the inside out so that you can become whole. Because when you're a broken individual, you have all of these pieces. And so you need a holistic approach in order to become a whole person. You are not just a one faceted person. You are a multifaceted being. So you're a spiritual being. You have a physical, a mental, emotional, social, all of those things play a role. And when your mental and emotional states are in ruin, it affects every other area of your life. You're unable to make sound decisions. You're unable to be consistent and maintain and things of that sort. And so until you're able to do that, until you're able to do the work internally and be healed completely, you cannot become a whole person because then when you become whole, then you reach a certain level of freedom that a lot of people will probably never meet in their lifetime. And when I, what I mean by that is you don't care about what people think about the things that you've done the mistakes that you made, the things that happened to you, you are open to sharing that freely in detail, being transparent without any regard to be, to have to answer to anybody else's perception of you and how they may feel about you. Oh, I love that. I absolutely love that. And Lady J, I want to share a little story with you of something that happened to me just a few months ago. I was in my kitchen, I was doing some dishes, and I was just kind of musing over why is it sometimes it takes a long time for us to create something that we're really interested in and we're really passionate about. And as I had this thought, I immediately heard and felt this really loud, forceful voice in my body. And it said, when you deny your power, 
your power is denied to you. When you acknowledge your power, your power is shown to you. You are more powerful than you can imagine. And I love what you just said because it is an inside healing to the outside job. And too many of us give away our power. The words we use are not, and we don't empower ourselves. We don't own our own power. We keep looking to someone outside to fix us and make us whole. And as you said, it's already there. It's already inside you. Yes, absolutely. And we have to think of it like this. We maintain everything else. We will clean our clothes before we put them on our body. So in essence, you're cleaning them from the inside out. We will clean our cars inside and outside, our homes inside and outside. You know, we will go in and we go to school in order to obtain certain knowledge to be able to grow and and further ourselves. We maintain all these other things. We put a lot of time and attention and effort into, you know, materialistic things or things that I would say that help us maintain our lives, you know, as far as what we need to survive. But when it comes to ourselves, we don't put that same amount of time and attention and maintenance into ourselves. And we should, because when you are sick, and if you have to have surgery, you can't put a Band-Aid over a bullet wound and expect to live or <laughs> or be healthy because it, eventually you, something is going to get infected and it's going to spread and you're going to die. <laughs> you know, so it's the same thing when you are emotionally and mentally in ruin or damaged or whatever the case may be, then you have to do the internal work. Yeah. And, you know, that's the other thing is recognizing that everything is there for your highest good. And I loved the conversation that you had with God. I I had a similar conversation with our higher power during a stroke. And it's amazing how desperately needed and valued you are. And one of the key messages that I got is you are perfect because of your imperfections not in spite of them. In fact, the divine told me, look, honey, you are created with your skills, your abilities, your talents, your priorities, your, you know, what, what you love, what excites you and delights you. You are also created with your faults, your foibles, your hot buttons, your issues, the things that tick you off and set you off, you know, ignite your, your worst characteristics. All of that is combined into one whole because that is what we need. You know, if we need another angel, we got angels. You know, they they serve a great purpose, but we need you to be a human being. And that means you yes. get the whole enchilada, sweetie. <laughs> yes, 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 indeed. <laughs> well, obviously, you've worked with so many people over the years, Lady J., I bet if you step back and look at it, you can see kind of a common thread, a common denominator of what people are dealing with, what their what their issue is before they get to that point where they go, I just need to talk to Lady J. She's got some answers for me. What what are they dealing with right before they call you? You'd be surprised. A lot of people. They're dealing with a lot of things that happened years ago, especially in childhood. And it usually has to do with some type of relationship. It could be childhood. It could be even something as recent as, let's say, relationships. It always has something to do with other people. Always. Even if it's something that they negative that they believe about themselves, it started or the seed was planted by someone else. I have yet to run into a person where that is not the root cause of the symptoms that they're experiencing. And so I tell people all the time, we, in the, in the mental health realm, for instance, there's a revolving door. We see it all the time. You know, people are in therapy for years. They take medication for years. And all we're doing is we are treating the symptoms. The root cause is never being treated. (laughs) And so Until you address that root cause, because it could have been, for instance, when I was a teenager, one of the things that was spoken into me by my parents was that 
You know, you'll never be good for nothing but to lay on your back. You're nobody's ever going to want you. No man is ever going to love you. Nobody's going to want to keep you. You're, you know, and that stuck with me. Not just because of what was said, but who said it. Sure. So when you when until we get to a place in our lives where we realize that every individual outside of ourselves, even our parents, they have no power over who and what you become. Everything that was said and done was necessary. And people look at me like I'm crazy when I say that. Even though it wasn't good to you, that doesn't mean it wasn't good for you. Just because you don't understand the why then, why you were in it, doesn't mean that you won't later on down the line. And so, yes, I could say that, hey, being molested or being raped, being kidnapped, being abused, you know, physically, uh, and all these things being abandoned. I could say, you know, what kind of God would, would do that and things of that sort. But then when I realized what my purpose was, which is first and foremost, I am the living, breathing example of God's love for us. Because every area now in my life, I can go back and I see where he was and he still had his hands on me. But on top of that, I would not have been able to obtain the life experience. Because while I do have the education, you know, in psychology and business, that can only teach me so much. You're 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 going off of some tests, and most people that teach psychology or wrote these books have never experienced what you've experienced ever. Life is the greatest teacher, and so how else would I be able to obtain those tools, knowing that there are other people out here that are going through that, and I would be assigned to those people, and so and I would ha- I have to go through something in order to obtain that, and so. Once you realize that everything that you go through in life is not just for you, it's for somebody else, then you have to start looking at it like, wow, like I'm one of the chosen ones, not just the call, but the chosen one. And so I have a special set of of skills and experience that can help other people. But oftentimes we don't get to that point until we've already done the work so we can understand what our identity is and our purpose is. You know, it seems so ironic because now I'm going back and I'm looking at the intention that we created, that we welcome the learning hidden in every challenge, which is what you just did, experiencing it as a divine blessing and miraculous guidance, which is what you just described you got. I'm like, wow, this is awesome. You are a living embodiment of the intention that we created together. So thank you for that. Wow. Oh. You are such an inspiration because you're absolutely right. There is a massive difference between book learning and understanding something intellectually versus Mm -hmm. having experienced it and have that muscle memory, that visceral, physical and emotional reaction because Mm -hmm. you've been there. You've done that. You've had the experience. It's so different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you could relate to people at a completely different level and really understand where they are and then help them recognize you you made such a powerful statement when you said it's not just for you it's always for others as well and you ultimately recognize that you are the chosen one and that yeah. mental outlook having that perspective it just completely shifts everything doesn't it Yes. And it can be scary. It can be scary. And it can also lead to if you're you're disobedient. Here's the thing. If you know the if you know the story of Moses in the Bible. Right. Moses tried to give every excuse about why he couldn't go to Pharaoh to somebody else. And Jesus was like, no, it's going to be you. I don't care what you say. You can do it. You know, you can go kicking or screaming or you can just do what I say. And so once I realized that I am one of those Moses. Like, yes, I have free will, but then when it comes to what I'm supposed to do, I really don't have a choice because this is why he, why he created me. I mean, you see other people out here, they try to commit suicide. You know, they succeed on the first try. I've tried four times and each time he allowed me to live. When I started running for my purpose, when I realized the magnitude and the power that my story and not just my story, because it's one thing to tell you a story, but it's another thing to actually give instruction and tools and practical things that people can use and teach them how to overcome and how to come out of something and how to truly be liberated. Once you realize the power in that 
and see how many people are just, oh my God, Lady J, Lady J, I need to talk to you. It can be so overwhelming and scary because now you realize that you are now responsible. You're responsible for the people that you are assigned to. This is part of your purpose, literally. This is your assignment in life. And once you realize that, it can be very scary. And I started to run and just dig myself into business full time, just business, helping everybody with business. That's part of another gift that he gave me, you know, but that led to me having the rupture brain aneurysm. So being disobedient, not sleeping, not eating, not doing what you're supposed to be doing. And then constantly, you know, thinking if I just do this and I do that and I do this, I'll be okay. Not listening. There's always warning before destruction. I did not heed to the warning. And that's what happened. And I almost lost my life. Now, God, he still had an assignment for me. So he didn't take me out of here. However, I was, you know, they were planning my funeral. I was very close to not, not making it. And so now. I have a constant reminder. It's still in my head. It's just coiled off for now. I, you know, I have a constant reminder and these disabilities and, and, and things to remind me that, Hey, you, you got to stay on track. Like you can't just be out here doing what you want to do. And, you know, and you also have to take time out for you. And I had to learn to, to stop taking on assignments that were not mine. Just because someone comes to you, you have to ask and get clarity. Of, okay, is this my assignment or is it not? Because I'm the type of person, because I'm a giver, I just jump in and help because I see a need and I want to fill the need. <laughs> yeah, so, I know that yeah. symptom very well. <laughs> so, no, yeah. no, one of the things, Lady J, I've noticed that there is something that I've experienced in my life. I never like to put this on anybody else, but I think it's a common that any human being has. When we want our physical world and how we experience our physical world to change, there's something inside us that has to shift first. What have you right. noticed your clients have to change internally before they get that transformation they're looking for in their external world? Well, there are two things. First, they have to be honest with themselves. You can fool everybody else, lie to everybody else, but you have to be honest with yourself about where you are, what you feel and what happened, who it's tied to and the why, why you feel the way you do. And then two, you have to also get to the point where you want to extract that which has been planted, that, that deep-rooted negative seed. You have to identify that seed and then actually want to uproot it internally. And the only way you're going to uproot it is you have to do the surgery. That means that you have to go back to a place that was so painful that you, you're trying to block out, you're trying to you know drown with drugs, alcohol, become a workaholic, whatever your, you know, gambling, whatever your <laughs> vice is, whatever your coping skill is, you know, you have to be able to do the work internally. You have to want to extract that. And so they have to be honest with themselves. And then two, they have to be willing to uproot or extract that negative. So important. So important. And that is a real challenge. Now, obviously, this kind of stuff is not something that you just solve overnight. I would love to have a magic wand. In fact, I went on Etsy and I found this really cool pen that looks like a magic wand. Sadly, mm -hmm. it doesn't do the job. It just looks right. cool. <laughs> and it, it turns out that to do any of this kind of transformational work, there's a process involved. There are baby steps that we can take that get us on the right path. What's one baby step that you would encourage us to start with right now? Well, I'm going to start with what I use in my bounce back program. So it's Operation Rock Bottom is phase one. Okay, the first thing you have to do is emotionally undress completely. And so, again, that's being honest with yourself. And I have an activity where I have people actually view themselves flipped inside out. So they can either do it in a mirror or on paper, because this is going to be the, the I'll say, the thing that we use to measure the progress and how you see yourself and what you're feeling about yourself and whether or not you reached, you know, your purpose. So. I have people, there's a, a, a sheet, right? They fill in this sheet that has the outline of a body. Kind of like you you see a dead, you know, outline of a, of a body in, um, in chalk when somebody, 
when someone dies or they can use a mirror and they fill up this body with everything good and bad about what they see about themselves, how they feel and things of that sort. Right. And so in that they get to see themselves now flip inside out. Everything, you know, is inside of this body. Right. And so it allows them to, once they see that, so some people may put, you know, ugly or depressed or suicidal or fearful or whatever the case may be. So now you have to go through each one of those things and tell yourself why. Why do you feel that way? Why do you see that when you look at yourself? That is how we start the process to address things, what these things are tied to or who these things are tied to. And then from there, we also, you know, once you start to emotionally, un- you start to emotionally undress, the next phase really is to go into that, that next phase of forgiveness. And so forgiveness is not just for, you know, you forgiving the other person because forgiveness is really for you. But sometimes the hardest thing for us to do is forgive ourselves, right? There are, I run into people who are 50, 60, some of them 70 years old. And they're upset because they're still holding on to something that happened when they were 15 or 12. And what we don't realize is all this time, this other person has been living their life. You've been held, you've held, you've held yourself hostage all this time because you refuse to let go. And in our minds, it's like, well, you don't know what they did. They don't, they don't, (laughs) they don't deserve to be forgiven. But okay, there are things that you've done that you didn't deserve to be forgiven for either. And so, I go through, you know, how to get to that point because it's, that's the hardest thing for everybody to do. I think a lot of my, a lot of the people that I encounter, they linger there the longest. And so there are certain things that I teach, the certain things that I show them, you know, tools that they can use where they begin to understand what true forgiveness looks like and why it's important and how you can get through that. Not overnight, but quickly, like quicker than you, than you've been doing, you know, and the more you do it, the better you get at it. I love that. I love what you're saying. And thank you so much because that baby step of really looking at yourself and really seeing what are you saying to yourself? Because often we wouldn't say that stuff to our worst enemy, but we are so mean and cruel and malicious to ourselves and just kind of understanding what is that little voice saying and where is that coming from? Why do we think that that's appropriate. I mean, that is a very difficult thing to do, but I think you're absolutely right. That is required for us to really get a handle. It's like setting a baseline. You know, one of the one of the comments I've always heard is that a breakdown is the beginning of a breakthrough. And so what you're helping us do is break down those components of the anger, the frustration, the overwhelm, the angst, the 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 depression, the fear, and really understand where did that come from? Because once we know what it is, where it came from, why it's here, it's always designed to be a blessing to move us forward, exactly like what we put in the intention today. It really is divine guidance. Thank you so much. That that is a brilliant practice. I love that. Lady J, I love all these insights that you've been sharing with us. And we we were chatting a little bit before we started this conversation about the free gift that you have for the audience. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. So what I will give is a free excerpt with a checklist for those who may be experiencing some things that they've been trying to overcome or, you know, some challenges that they've they've been faced with and they're having a hard time, you know with that and so it will come from my ebook the little girl nobody fought for who became the woman nobody wanted and so that will give you a little bit of insight into what you may be feeling experiencing you know thinking concerning your current situation in whatever capacity that may be and then you'll have a checklist and some practical tips as well to go along with that to help you you know get the process started 
Thank you so much. That's incredibly generous because I know it's really challenging when you are rock bottom, you just feel like there's no way out. And to be able to connect with the bounce back queen who has been through it all, I mean, brain aneurysm, kidnapping, rape, uh, you name it. Honestly, the things that haven't happened to you is probably shorter than the things that have. That's amazing. And here you are with a smile on your face and a generous spirit, and you're here to serve. And you're viewing this as blessings that really are illustrations from God that you are needed and valued and cherished and treasured. And it's so true. We definitely cherish and treasure you. Thank you for such a generous gift to the audience. That, that's really amazing. I can't wait to download my copy. And I'm going to get your book because that sounds like something I definitely want to read. Now, one of the key things that we do here at The Abundance Journey, we always turn the table on our guests because we know that when we give, is when we've received the most. What can we do to support you? Well, I do have a, so I also have another book. It's a book collaboration. It's called I Survived Suicide. And it is a compilation of five stories. And it's actually volume one. Volume two will be worked on this year. And it's being turned into a full feature film that will be streaming on major movie platforms. And so it. It always consists of four stories of people who have tried to commit suicide, the things that led up to that, what actually happened, what was the outcome, and then how they now use that experience to help other people. And then there's a fifth story in there of someone who did not survive suicide. And so the book also gives uh, tools and encouragement to everyone that may be experiencing whatever those individuals were experiencing. And so in the film, will be based on a true story, of course, and it will, you'll get to see the experiences in real time. And of course, there is a message wrapped up in the film as well. So if everyone could go to either my website, if you want a signed copy, that is ladyj.co, that's L-A-D-Y-J dot C-O, or you can go to Amazon and get it, I Survive Suicide. Thank you so much for that. I definitely am going to get a copy of your book because I think it's so important that we acknowledge people who are struggling. It is very real. It is a it is a normal part of the human condition to struggle. It is yes. because we are given contrast to get us to grow. And yes. you know, you have definitely grown immeasurably and I I so appreciate your generosity, your vulnerability, your openness, your charm, your candor in everything that you've shared with us to, today, except for one thing, because now I, I have three pages of notes <laughs> and I have to pick one of the things you said to do the activated button segment around. I'm like, how am I going to do this? <laughs> so thank you. And bummer. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Well, stick around because we're going to activate abundance in just a minute. It's Elaine Starling, the Abundance Ambassador. And I know since you're listening to this show or watching this show, The Abundance Journey, you really want to experience more abundance in your life. Well, that's why I wrote the book, Five Steps to Activate Your Abundance. It's available for sale right now from Amazon, from barnesandnoble.com and many international sellers. And I want you to pick up a copy because I'm really opening the kimono here and sharing all of the information you need to experience abundance in every single aspect of your life. The book's divided into three parts. Part one is called Meeting the Divine. This is where I share my near-death experience and the conversation I got to have with our higher power during my stroke. In part two, Messages from the Divine, I share the best practices that I was given, the secret sauce in how life actually works. And so you understand really why you're here and how you can make the most of your life. So you love every single moment. And then in the part three is partnering with the divine. That's where I go into each of the five steps to activate your abundance and explain exactly why it works so well. So take a moment to pick up a copy. It's available as an ebook, a paperback book, an audiobook and a video course. So however you like to absorb information, abundance is waiting for you. You can see why I want
wanted to chat with Lady J. I mean, she's so sincere. She's so authentic. She's so real. You feel her heart. You, you connect with the divine just being in her presence because she is so real. Step one is gratitude. And I always appreciate connecting with someone who has the experience. She made a really clear statement about the difference between just book learning and understanding something versus having that real life experience where you have muscle memory, visceral experience of what happened. And you can really relate because you've lived through it. It's a much more extensive knowing that is totally different from understanding. And I think that's one of the biggest gifts that she had to bring. So step one is gratitude. Step two is to acknowledge something you heard that was an aha for you. And one of the things that Lady J said is the very first step she takes with every single one of her clients is to take them through an exercise where they delve deeply into their biggest hurts and fears, where they really look within and find all the negative things, all the negative beliefs that they have about themselves. Because one of the things that she said, it was just not, I wasn't recording at the time, but she said, you can't fix what you don't face. You can't fix what you don't face. So she helps people face their fears. And that, that courage that you're willing to step into, that was like, wow. And talk about courage. What this woman has been through, I'm just in awe, really. So step two, acknowledge that you have to face the fear. You have to recognize the fear. You have to define it in terms that are meaningful to you, what you fear and where it came from and who else was involved in helping create that fear. Step three is appreciate the difference it will make in your life when you do what you just acknowledged. Well, when I'm willing to look in the mirror and really consider why am I letting this hold me back? Why? What is the advantage to me in playing small instead of owning my truth, instead of owning my power? especially after getting that message from the divine, you are more powerful than you can imagine. Stop denying your power. Take off the training wheels, sweetie. We need you to step up. So this recognizing that, yes, everybody has fear. It is real. It's very real to you. And when you face the fear, when you acknowledge the fear, is when you start to heal. But you will never heal if you don't face it. So I really want to honor that because that was that was so important for me to hear. Step four, activate your abundance. We've got three different ways we can do that. Grab a calendar, schedule time on your calendar to get it done. The second thing is to create a little physical trigger like crossing your fingers or tugging on your earlobe. The third way is to declare to people what you are going to do. It's really great to have an accountability buddy and let them know, look, when you hear fear coming through in what I'm saying, I want you to call me on it because often I'm too close to it. I don't even hear myself saying something that is self-disparaging, tearing myself down, resisting the opportunity that's present for me. So if you can be that sounding board please let me know when I'm not stepping in to own my power. And that's my choice. You get to hear, you get to get back to me and tell me if you ever hear me not honoring my power and not acknowledging when fear is present, I want to know about it. Because only when I know about it, only when I stare at it in the face, can I heal it and let it go. Step five, celebrate your progress. Isn't this awesome? It doesn't matter how horrible your life gets from time to time. That's not the norm. And remember the intention that we created together, that every single experience is a learning we, we have learning hidden in every single challenge, experiencing it as a divine blessing and miraculous guidance, because that's truly what it is. You are a miracle. 
And you are here because the God of your understanding needs you here right now, exactly as you are. You are perfect. And you have the opportunity to transform a breakdown into a breakthrough. How beautiful is that? How can it get even better than this? Yes. Thank you so much for joining me for the abundance journey. You are a blessing and you are blessed. So welcome the blessings in. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. You've been listening to the Abundance Journey Show with Elaine Starling. Visit theabundancejourney.com slash podcast gifts to access today's gift as well as gifts from our other guests. Tune in every week to activate abundance in your life and business. If something resonated with you, please share it with your friends so they can benefit too. Keep activating abundance and we'll see you in the next episode.